In the last video, we had fun running trains and customizing the soft controllers. Hi, this is Darren from Modern Railroad Techniques, and welcome to another video. In this video, we're going to look at block occupancy and adding DCC addresses to our turnouts. If you're a first time viewer, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and click that little bell icon to get advised of my upcoming videos. Also, don't forget to go to my new website at www.modelrailroadtechniques.com. Um, DCC addresses to our turnouts. Um, and now how do you do that you ask so I'm gonna go to a little test switchboard that I've made up here now I'm sure some of you have already gone ahead and started using the, the, the CAD side of the the program if you haven't and you want to learn how to do it it's just a matter of being in edit mode going to the little the pencil here and it's in edit mode Grab the pen, you'll see the pen on the screen there, and it's just a matter of drawing out what you want to draw. You can get as simple as you want to, or as complicated as you wish. Uh, it's quite a handy little tool. Um, how do you do turnouts, you say? It's just a matter of picking out where you want the turnout. Basically what that means is, is the program's not going to allow you to draw that um, into that element. So it's just a matter of coming up and then you can scroll across and you can do any configuration or passing siding as you like. So you can also go into to here if you want to get a little more specific about the type of um, turnouts you wish to use or into uh, slip switches, double slips, single slips, crossings and the like. So what we're going to do now is we're going to quickly show you how to prepare the turnout for control with the computer. So I'm going to use this one here. So it's just a matter of double clicking in edit mode. And then you're going to get this box. Now I've already put some information here, but I'll step step you through it. So, so we know this is a, a right hand turnout and you can give it a name. So any name you want, I'll just call it W1. Um, you can call it station name oh, we won't get into the naming conventions we'll leave that up to to your to your good judgment I don't really use this this section here too much um, I'll use sp speed limits and other ways that I'll go into in other videos however my understanding is that you can dictate which state the turnout is on and you can give it maximum speed limit so obviously that would be quite useful for turnout uh, ladders within uh, a yard or a, or a large station or even a little station. Now the next one is the important one. So this is how we add our addressing from our DCC system to to train controller. So whatever you've selected back in video one of your DCC system. So mine's the Roco Fleischmann Z21. And then there's a myriad of turnout control modules out there. So mine are a brand called L LDT, Lefinsky Datum Technica. So you address that up how you wish to do that. And I might actually do, I'm going to do a video on how to do the, the LDT ones. So if you've got any comments below regarding your type of digital system you might be having trouble with regarding the... Um, how to how to address them? I'll do that in a another video. Now I've got the the decoder configuration section here. Now uh, the switch time is depending on the brand or the type of decoder you're using or accessory decoder. You can actually add a switch time. So what that means is it'll give a pulse or some sort of uh, signal that will go for that given time. Now that's all those are set up within my uh, LDT modules, um, so I don't. I normally leave it on zero milliseconds, but uh, you can change that to your needs. Now, <clears throat> this is a very handy little piece of kit right here. Now, the outcome can output configuration, I should say. Okay, so if you're under the board and you've wired your your decoder up, and you come up and you realise when you go to test it, the right hand is actually for the straight aspect and vice versa. You can actually just swap these around by see right now it's it's currently like that it's just a matter of 
swapping it around and then now you'll be in in phase or call it what you will so straight will be straight and right will be to the right and you'll see why I do that the little normal state will will click up that's just like a little indicator these number of contacts um, come into play so right now um, not, we can't do anything with them but when you start getting into uh, double slips and single slips this you'll have the options of um, three to four um, contacts that uh, now handy little uh, button here that sometimes I use um, if I'm having if I'm struggling with uh, some aspect if you push this info button just brings up the, the help guide for that particular uh, property of the element that you're going into so that's pretty well across the board uh, within TC so just a, it's a matter of just exiting out of it and you come back now indicators something else I don't I don't really use but what a lot of people are doing are actually having detection occupancy detection within their their turnouts or groups of turnouts so obviously very important within a, a yard ladder system I could see that being quite handy uh, I'll just I set mine up a little bit differently now the the conditions tab is a very interesting one now it's probably a little bit beyond this sort of basic series regarding uh, getting train control up and running but in short what you can do you can add conditions or it's almost like a yes and a no the way I find it um, so you can do it for each individual state of the turnout now obviously that's on going to the right or going to the straight depending on the, 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 the type of turnout you're using however so I can have it on the right but then I can have there needs to be specific conditions for it to go to the right so a condition might be a given signal needs to be on an orange or a green or something something is just um, to for it to actually go to the right or some other condition that you can think of as a, you can use this and it's quite a powerful tool now the last tab within the uh, the the turnout properties is the comments now you've probably realized I use comments for just about everything so what I use this for within train controller um, it's very easy to control the turnouts so it's just a matter of we're out of edit mode now so we'll go to this little um, signal switch down here so you'll see it pop up when it comes on to any of the turnouts it's just a matter of hovering over once it comes up and it's just left mouse but button now that's to the right straight to the right and if you've configured it correctly you you actually hear your point either snap if it's a, uh, a solenoid or the motor noise if it's a, a motor type turnout control Okay, now we'll open up uh, the block editor to start adding all our bits and pieces we need to, to to get this working. So, still in edit mode, double click with the left mouse button, and it'll open up this properties box. Now, you can call this block what you want. Um, I have a a specific naming convention you can come up with your own I'm, I'm not going to dictate what you're going to call your blocks at this point in time but we'll just leave it as block 24 so show block signals I'll just scroll this across so showing the block signals will just take away once we go out of edit um, out of the property box we'll just get rid of these some people like them some people don't it's it's a really a matter of choice or some people go one step further and they want only want to see that within edit mode so I don't quite know why you would want to not see the block only in edit mode but that's what some an option you can have so to see it again it is just a matter of going back to edit mode double clicking back on it to bring the properties up uh, personally I never cl click that one uh, for my blocks anyway there's there's some some elements you don't you don't want to see okay uh, signal and speed limits so 
It's just a matter of playing around with this. Now, you can do a maximum speed within a block. Now, there's other ways to do it, but this is the very simple way to do it. So it's 120 kilometers an hour, so that's quite a speed, a fast speed limit for any block, uh, depending on the era, the type. If it's a little branch line, you might want to bring that, that right down. So you can just set your speed there. Um, the restrict, restricted speed is if we've requested a yellow signal so that's obviously a little bit beyond what we're, we're talking about here but you can actually once you know you can have your, your upper maximum speed but if it's a, an orange signal if you set it up that um, if this if this train is coming into this say into this block and this one here is you might put a condition on it if this one here is um, current so it's got a train in it and this one here is unoccupied might just slowly come in on a normal speed and then it'll just come in on a, a yellow signal like so that's just off the top of my head um, regarding how you, you may use that if you wish to now the issues of the track you can have bi-directional track or you can just have it going left or right so when we talk about that it's just the orientation of 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 the particular block so if our block was sitting here those arrows will be going up and down. Okay, the next one, uh, the block edi editor, is where the magic starts happening. So you can see that it's we're on block 24, so we're going to look at this one. So right now it's all blue, so it doesn't actually have an occupancy detector uh, assigned to it. So if you have to come up here on that little yellow dot, and then we can apply different things. So as we work through the, the series of videos, I will we'll slowly go through what these all mean, but we want new contact indicator. So depending on your system you have, I have current uh, draw occupancy. There's a myriad others. Okay, the way the uh, block detection works when you're adding a contact indicator, you need to select your digital system. So mine's the LDT HS88. So mine has three different buses, so it has three different outputs. So won't confuse the issue, we'll just go with the left one. So the addresses for the S88 system are a bit unique. Now, so effectively you can have 31 modules with 16 outputs, which is the best part of nearly, what's my maths, 496 I think off the top of my head. Now so if you've got number module number one in the chain it'll be module one will be number one and then the addresses if you run a, an occupancy module that's got 16 so mine currently only has eight so block one one of one block two one of two block three one of three and so on so when you get up to your, your maximum of 16 is when you start going to two of one three of one and all the way through to 30 31 of 16 if that uh, if that sort of makes sense so we're just going to keep this very simple so the address of module one and block number one we've given to to this block here okay it's now time to test the occupancy as you can see i've got a ramp meter there guys i can't stress enough it's very important to test individual inputs as you go it's so much easier to find any issues and faults at the time than leave it later on and go back through a mirror of wiring uh, that's the end of the video thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe to my channel click the bell icon to be notified of upcoming videos please go and have a look at my new website www modelrorotechniques.com like us on facebook make sure you comment below any input comments ideas for upcoming videos or anything we could improve the channel on that'd be greatly appreciated thanks for watching bye for now